Have you ever wondered how to survive a piranha feeding frenzy? Picture this, you're navigating the winding channels of the Amazon River, the world's largest tropical rainforest river system, teeming with diverse and fascinating wildlife. Among them lurks the infamous piranha, a creature that has captured the world's imagination, often painted as a fearsome, insatiable predator. But is this fearsome reputation deserved? The reality may surprise you? Piranhas, while certainly capable predators, are more often scavengers than hunters, preferring to feast on the deceased rather than actively seeking live prey. Their notorious feeding frenzies are often a result of scarcity, not inherent savagery. Yet the fact remains that piranhas are not to be trifled with. Their razor-sharp teeth and powerful jaws can inflict serious harm. So if you find yourself surrounded by a school of hungry piranhas, what do you do? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the world of piranhas and how to survive their infamous feeding frenzies. First, let's debunk some myths about piranhas. These creatures have been villainized in popular culture, leading us to believe they're always aggressive, always hungry, and always out to get us. But that's simply not the truth. Piranhas, like most creatures in the wild, have a complex behavior pattern that's largely misunderstood. Many of us are led to believe that piranhas are ruthless predators, constantly on the hunt. In reality, piranhas are typically scavengers, not predators. They prefer to feast on already dead or dying prey rather than actively hunting for food. So, if you were to take a dip in piranha-infested waters, you'd probably be fine as long as you're not bleeding or flailing around like injured prey. This brings us to another common misconception. The idea that piranhas can strip a cow to the bone in a matter of minutes, while it's true that a large group of piranhas can do significant damage to a large animal, this would only occur under specific conditions. The piranhas would need to be in a state of extreme hunger or agitation. So unless you've stumbled upon a group of piranhas that haven't eaten in days, you're unlikely to experience this gruesome fate. Let's also address the belief that piranhas are always on the offensive. In fact, piranhas are more likely to attack when they feel threatened. They're defensive creatures by nature. If they feel cornered or if their young are in danger, that's when they're likely to bite. But again, this is a reaction to a threat, not an unprovoked attack. So, what can we take away from all this? Well, if you ever find yourself face to face with a piranha, remember that they're not the mindless killing machines they're often portrayed to be. They're complex creatures that operate based on survival instincts, just like any other creature in the wild. Understanding piranha behavior is the first step to surviving a feeding frenzy. Now that you understand piranhas a bit better, let's talk about how to avoid provoking them. Piranhas are creatures that respond to certain cues in their environment. By understanding these triggers, you can significantly reduce the likelihood of finding yourself in a piranha feeding frenzy. First off, let's look at water splashing. It's no secret that piranhas are attracted to the commotion in the water. It's actually a survival instinct for them. They associate the splashing with an animal struggling in the water, which means an easy meal. So if you find yourself in piranha-infested waters, be as calm and composed as possible. Avoid vigorous movements that cause splashing. Be like a stealthy crocodile, slipping into the water without a ripple. Next, piranhas are incredibly sensitive to the scent of blood. Their acute olfactory senses can detect even the smallest traces of blood in the water, which they associate with wounded prey. So. If you're bleeding, even just a tiny cut, it's best to stay out of the water altogether. And if you're already in the water when you discover a wound, calmly and quietly, make your way to the shore. Remember, panic will only make things worse. Finally, piranhas are fiercely protective of their nests. If you stumble upon a cluster of eggs or baby piranhas, back away quietly. Disturbing a piranha nest is a surefire way to provoke a defensive attack. One last tip piranhas are more active during the day, so if you can, avoid swimming in piranha-infested waters during daylight hours. Here's the thing about piranhas. They're not mindless killing machines, but creatures acting on instinct. They're just trying to survive, just like us. So understanding their behavior and respecting their boundaries is key to avoiding a dangerous encounter. Remember, the best way to survive a piranha feeding frenzy is to avoid causing one in the first place. But what if you're already in the midst of a piranha feeding frenzy, you might ask? Well, fret not, because even in this terrifying situation, survival is possible. First and foremost, remember to stay calm. Yes, it might sound counterintuitive given the circumstances, but it's crucial. Panic equals splashing, and splashing equals a dinner bell to piranhas, so keep your cool, breathe. You're not a meal, you're a survivor. 
Next you must move, but not in the way you might think. Don't thrash around or make rapid movements. You don't want to draw attention or provoke the piranhas. Instead, move slowly and steadily towards the nearest shore. It's a game of patience and composure. Now, you might be tempted to fight back to punch or kick the piranhas. Let me stop you right there. Fighting off piranhas is not like fending off a shark. These creatures are small, agile, and there are usually quite a few of them. Your energy is better spent moving towards safety than trying to fight off a school of hungry piranhas. If you're injured and bleeding, try to cover the wound if possible. Blood can excite piranhas and make them more aggressive. Use whatever you have, a piece of clothing, a leaf, anything that can help stem the bleeding and conceal the wound from the piranhas. But what about those piranha teeth, you might wonder? Yes, they're sharp and can cause harm. But remember, piranhas typically go for smaller prey. They're not accustomed to taking on something as large as a human. So while they might nip and bite, it's unlikely they'll do serious damage unless provoked. Remember, piranhas are more scared of you than you are of them. They're not mindless monsters but creatures following their instincts. Your goal is not to defeat them, but to safely exit their territory. Surviving a piranha feeding frenzy is about staying calm and making smart decisions. So, keep your wits about you, move with deliberate calmness, and remember, you're a survivor, not a meal. So, to recap, we've journeyed together through the intriguing world of piranhas, their behavior, and how to survive a feeding frenzy. It's been quite a ride, hasn't it? We've unearthed some fascinating facts, dispelled a few myths, and armed ourselves with knowledge that could, quite literally, save our lives one day. Let's take a moment to revisit what we've learned. First and foremost, understanding piranha behavior is crucial. We've discovered that piranhas, far from being the mindless, ravenous monsters of popular fiction, are complex creatures with patterns and habits that can be studied and predicted. They're typically scavengers, not hunters, preferring to feed on weak, injured, or dead animals. Knowing this, we can appreciate that piranhas aren't inherently out to get us, but rather, they're opportunistic feeders responding to their environment. Next, we've learned the importance of avoiding provocation. This means not splashing around or causing a ruckus in piranha-infested waters. Remember, piranhas are attracted to noise and commotion, as these often signal an easy meal. The quieter and calmer we are, the less likely we are to draw their attention. Also, if we're bleeding, it's best to stay out of the water altogether. Piranhas can detect blood and are drawn to it like magnets. And then, we discussed surviving a feeding frenzy. While it's a scenario we'd all rather avoid, it's a possibility we must prepare for. Staying calm is vital. Panicking only increases our chances of getting bitten. Instead, we need to move slowly and deliberately, avoiding any sudden movements that might trigger an attack. We also talked about the importance of protecting our vital areas. If we find ourselves in a feeding frenzy, we should curl up, covering our face, neck, and abdomen. And if possible, we should make our way to the shore or a boat using gentle, non-threatening movements. Lastly, we learned that piranhas, despite their fearsome reputation, are more bark than bite. Most piranha bites are not fatal. They might be painful and require medical attention, but they're rarely life-threatening. This knowledge can help us keep our cool in a high-stress piranha encounter. It's been a whirlwind tour of piranha survival strategies, but armed with this knowledge, we stand a much better chance of coming out unscathed should we ever find ourselves facing a piranha feeding frenzy. Remember, knowledge is power, and understanding our environment and the creatures within it is our best defense. So, let's respect these fascinating creatures, their habitats, and their behaviors. After all, we're just visitors in their world. With these tips in mind, you'll be well prepared to survive a piranha feeding frenzy. Stay safe out there!